Hey guys, welcome to 5 Minute Effects. Uh, today we're going to be looking at secondaries. Uh, I've been getting a lot of comments and requests on various videos on how to do debris emission and add some secondary little bits of dirt and all kinds of things from a rigid body sim. So uh, we're going to do that today and see if we're going to do something cool. Alright, let's get going. Okay, so we're going to pick up from where we left off on the quick RBDs tutorial because uh, we're just going to use the same sim so that we can start from there. And what we're going to do is just come back here into RBD and quick RBDs and get our cache that we've got going here, which is this. And then we are going to drop down a null and we're going to just port out of here and we're going to say R2 secondaries. Select this control C, jump up, and we're gonna create another geo node in here. And we're gonna call this one small debris. We're gonna lay down a object merge in our release. Control V into here. So now the first thing we want to do when we're doing secondaries, we essentially want to make some points that we're going to use to emit these secondaries in our sim. There's a bunch of different ways to do this, but the way I like to do this is to actually hack the debris source node. So there is this node called debris source. So first off, if you give it unpack geometry, so that we have geometry here. This debris source is going to scatter points on that geometry. And then when that geometry separates, it's going to search based on this search radius for this many points. And it's going to generate a point for this long, and then it's going to die off. And we're going to use those points for some debris emission, a little bit of particle stuff. You can even use it for volumes if you want. There is a problem here with the debris source. Select this here and right click, say allow editing. It scatters points every frame, which is obviously not what we want because we want to try and get an ID and a rest position so that we can have the random noises and things like that. Give it different colors or different scales or whatever. So we're going to use this scatter here. Uh, this is going to convert your geometry to edges and then it's going to scatter points along those edges and this will scatter along your surface. There's nothing coming through here because the surface one is set to zero. What we really want to do here is we want to select all of this, drop down a time shift, Let's just come up here and go uh, rest frame. So we're going to copy this, paste relative reference. So that'll always be the same star frame. Attribute interpolate. The only thing we need to change on these two here is to output these two attributes, which is what the attribute interpolate is going to use to um, find out where it was and where it is now. So what we're going to do is we're going to put this one in here and this one in here. Attributes are going to be interpolated. What this is going to do is it's going to scatter our points once, freeze it, and then it's going to use this geometry here to move these points around. It's similar to a pointer form, but this interpolate is a little bit quicker. Then we're just going to plug in this in here, in here, so just, so we are going to come in here and we're going to create a few attributes here with a point triangle. Don't worry, we're not going to get too vex heavy, we're just going to create some attributes. So create ID and rest, I'm going to do V at rest equals at P, which is the current position, and then we're going to do I at new ID equals at PT now. The reason I say new ID instead of ID is because an ID gets created here and I don't want to get confused. And now I know the new ID is the ID that I made. And the rest here is uh, the rest position. So that if you go here, you can see P will update as you go, but rest will not. So we can use this to map noises. Jump up, and there we go. Now we can scatter points and do as much stuff as we want. And we have those two attributes, new ID and rest, that we can use to map some stuff. Okay, so let's scatter some points. Let's do a thousand here and a thousand on surface debris. This is dependent on your scene scale. So if we go back here, that our scene scale is a two by two meter area that we want to handle. So point one is fine because it's literally going to be point A and point B at 0.1 distance and it's going to look for them. This lifespan is in second. For this scene it's set to 24 frames a second so these things are going to last 24 frames for one second. What I usually like to do is say 1 divided by dollar fps which is the frames per second and this will live for exactly one frame and then you just multiply that by how many frames you like. If I do 24 it's going to be 1 again, 48 frames. Oh, that's it. For the debris emission, one second, because we can always chop it later. Let's play it, and you can see the points get generated. 
Oh, and then they die. Because this is a solve, it can be quite heavy when you've got a lot of geometry. So I just like to do a file cache right after this. So let's just paste this file cache in here. Small debris commission. Dollar job. So that's what we want. Save the scene and then save to disk. There we go, that's cached out. Uh, this is set to load from disk, so now we can totally scrub this and it'll be totally fine. We don't have to worry about it caching again and again and again. I hope you enjoyed this video. Like the video if you liked it, or subscribe to my channel for more content. And feel free to support me on Patreon with a link down in the comment section.